everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into Carol's Daily Sauce. Please do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe. Also, click on the bell to be reminded of all the videos that I upload. We are still reading the story, Wounded for a Purpose, out of the book, Unraveling the Layers, Memoirs of a Wounded Soul. We are going to finish this story on today, Wounded for a Purpose, by Leah Freeman. This has been a very, very good story. Not a good story in the sense of um, entertainment, but we know, most of us know, that God has something for all of us. Uh, we know, and I always start this off whenever I go into the story, we know that she experienced bitterness, we know that she experienced divorce, we know that she experienced so many things, abuse, uh, getting married and three weeks later filing for a divorce, uh, marrying a man who professed to be a preacher, but behind the closed doors of his home was not that. So what we want to do is we want to remember all of the adjectives, all of the things that she had experienced, such as hurt, pain, disbelief, depression, anxiety, all of these things that God is definitely, definitely able to heal each and every one of us from. I am a living witness. What I do want you to do is make sure that you share this out to people. Understand that this book, Unraveling the Layers, Memoirs of a Wound soul can be purchased on Amazon for $10.99. If you have Amazon Prime, they can ship it to you free shipping in one day. Another thing I found out is that you can get this book also on Kindle. There are several apps on our stores. If you have obviously an iPhone, it's the Apple Store. Uh, if you have an Android, it's the, I can't remember because I don't have Android anymore, but it's an Android store. Um, and you can download those and pay 99 cents and download this book. That option doesn't work for me because I'm old school. I like to actually have the book in my hand, flipping the pages as you guys can hear as I'm reading the story. But I do believe that if you know someone, this is a gift that you can give someone. And I need you guys to understand, I'm not getting anything for this. I'm not getting any type of monetary anything. The only thing that I'm getting out of this is the thought that somebody somewhere can be healed through the stories. This story, as well as a lot of the, all of the other stories, um, you may be able to relate to. You may not even be able to relate to not one story. You may be able to relate to only the poems, okay? But trust me, someone in your life can relate to this. And basically what this book is telling us is as women, we are enough. We are not who anybody else said we were. And it's not a man bashing book by no means. Um, there are women here in this book who have been verbally abused by their own mothers. So um, I just wanted to put that out there. I don't want it to uh, be deemed as a men bashing book. Okay, so I do remember uh, that at the end of the last recording, I said Flashlight 2004. It's actually Flashlight 2014. And if you guys remember, when we first started on this, Leah had went into her basement, pulled out a box with the year 1972 on it. She knew it was her box because that was the year in which she was born. We have went from 1972, where her father took her as a baby away from her mother, took her to New York City with her grandmother, excuse me, and pretty much severed her relationship with her mother. Um, as a result, left her with her grandmother. Her grandmother raised her. She didn't have a relationship with her mother. Her father, in turn, went back with her mother, had two children. By the time Leah came back, she didn't know her mother. She didn't know her two siblings. This young lady has been through a lot. But remember the name of her story, 
wounded for a purpose. And as I said earlier, we will finish this. I hope that this is blessing all of you just as it is blessing me, because after this, we are gonna go into another story. So, Flashlight 2014. Surely, this was all that was left in the box. I was done remembering how terribly wrong things had gone in my life and I wanted to move forward. What was the purpose of walking down memory lane? Then I spotted the flashlight and a light came on in my spirit. There was a purpose in all of that pain. The enemy saw what God intended for my life and made it his mission to destroy it before it ever got started. The separation from my mother showed me how important a mother's love is to the development of her children. My father leaving showed me that none of us are perfect. My first love taught me to guard my heart. Being shunned by the church taught me to be careful how we handle souls because wounds from the church run deep. My cousin taught me that all family ain't blood and all blood ain't family. My children's father taught me, fathers, I'm sorry, taught me that love doesn't exist without God. My daughter being violated taught me how to hear God's voice. My dad's stroke and my son going to prison taught me that no matter what things look like, I must have faith. My marriage taught me to wait on God's best. A proposal is much more than accepting a ring. We have to be careful, <clears throat> excuse me, to review the terms and conditions of the contract our future mate is offering. I made some choices and I had to live with those consequences. God reveals things to us before we make those decisions. We just have to have an ear to hear his voice in the spirit and stop listening with the ears on the sides of our head. My divorce taught me healing comes through forgiveness. If I am not thanking God for every smile, there is no way I should be blaming him for every tear. The enemy's plan was revealed. My wounds were the result of a spiritual battle. I had been suffering because I was systematically having injuries inflicted on me by the enemy and these experiences were his weapons. He had attacked my mind, body, and spirit, waging war for my soul. He failed because he didn't know that wounds become places where light enters the soul. Can of Ointment 2016. That brings me to the final item in the box. It was a beautiful can, intricately decorated and ordinate. I broke open the seal and found that it was filled to the brim with ointment. Wow, I could tell that this ointment was super expensive. It had a texture that was silky and it was extremely fragrant, like a priceless designer perfume. The aroma was intoxicating, so I kept putting it to my nose to inhale the scent. It smelled sweet and familiar, but I didn't know why. I kept racking my brain, trying to place the fragrance, but I just couldn't figure it out what it was. Then the Lord spoke to my heart. All of the pain of suffering created this oil. This oil was the anointing that was placed on my life and I needed to fully protect it. I understood now why the calm was so hard to open. Um, it, she has clam, was so hard to open, but remember she couldn't open the jar. The pearl was the treasure created from its pain. I knew why the lady in the Bible chose to break hers at the master's feet. 
and it was the same with me. Each and every drop of the precious oil came at a price and cost more than many could dream of having. This was the oil of my testimony, carefully manufactured and perfectly blended by the hand of the master. He wanted me to know how priceless it was. He was trying to show me that I had to be carefully selected for this task. Then he revealed the recipe for the perfume. The fragrant was familiar because it contained the crushed petals of my innocence mixed with the muskiness of my tears. The hurt and the turmoil were the equivalent of an oil press. Through my suffering, God made something beautiful. And then when he needed a box, he took the broken pieces of my heart and reconstructed them into one. It sparkled and shined like a mosaic piece of art, and he showed me that I was beautiful. I rose from the floor with a box in my hand. Somehow, during all of the excitement, the other items faded away. Go, he said, go to the mirror so you can see what I see. I ran to the mirror and I stood there in utter amazement. Y'all, I got goosebumps. I couldn't believe my eyes. Is this me? My eyes framed my soft eyelashes, stared back at me with pools of coffee. My skin glowed chocolate without a blemish in sight. I smiled and beautiful with white teeth sparkled between my lips. I pulled up my blouse and ran my fingers lovingly over the scars of my belly. I looked at my hands and at my... I their character. Even my toes, chip paint and all seemed perfect to me. Then my gaze moved to the roots of my hair and I couldn't resist my curls. Where had I been all my life? Never in a million years had I imagined feeling this way. I finally felt whole. Oh my gosh, her story, wounded for a purpose. This is, this is, y'all, this story got me. This one right here really, really got me. And um, in reading it, um, I was, I was, I was thinking about something that I was going to say, and it'll come back to me. But you know what? When I was at church today, the pastor says God uses ordinary people and makes them extraordinary people. And you notice that she said she looked at the scars on her belly, so that was when she had to have maybe a cesarean section, or um, she also had to have a mastectomy. Remember, she had breast cancer. She went through a lot, but God took her through all of those changes, all of those steps, every chapter in her life, because there was purpose. And just as Leah Freeman, who wrote the story, wounded for a purpose, had a purpose, so do you. Whatever it is you're going through, whatever you see yourself up against, whatever is right now troubling you, remember, no matter what place you're in right now, it's only temporal, it's only temporary, it'll pass, but you have to believe that God can see you out of it. I hope that you all have enjoyed the end of Wounded for a Purpose. I will be um, all day today, um, trying to read stories. I believe I'm going to do another one so that every day I can keep pumping them out because I'm telling you this right here, there is an audience for it. People want self-help. People want to know that others have been through the same thing that they are going through. A lot of times as women and even men, if there are any men listening to this, we think 
that we're the only ones going through things. No, we all go through things. All of us go through things. Everybody has a story. But the most important thing about everyone having a story is making your story have the very best ending. And the way you can do that is trusting God. Thank you so much to each and every one of you for tuning in. Please share, because sharing is most definitely caring. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to click on that bell as well. I love you all. You all be blessed and be encouraged. Go ahead and put in the comments some other things that you might want me to read, some other things or suggestions that you might have that you want me to do. And I'll talk to you all real soon. Be blessed. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. This is Carol. I'm back. So I decided that what I was going to do is since we have just finished up uh, Leah Freeman's story, what I'm going to do is once we finish up the story, I'm going to go to the back of the book and I'm going to read and tell you a little bit more about the author. So Leah Freeman um, is a life enthusiast. She is an encourager, a midwife. She serves as a youth leader and has written many plays. She rides sports bikes. She has raised five children, survived breast cancer. She loves people and has lived an incredible life. Her favorite pastimes are reading, trying new recipes, exploring nature, and making memories with her grandchildren. She now resides in the Bay Area of Northern California, where she has a home that is filled with love and an interesting collection of books. Well, the one thing I just want to say to Miss Leah Freeman, if she ever reads this, um, or if she ever sees this, you were wounded for a purpose. God knew his purpose, and I'm so glad that he knew what he wanted to do with you. Um, I keep stating that I am a contributing writer in the book, and actually, when this book um, was published and was ready to be sold, we had a women's workshop. Um, I believe I met Leah, and um, I actually met most of the authors um, that were in the book. Not all of them showed up, but I believe I met Leah. And um, it's so funny because prior to the book actually being published and me actually reading the stories of everybody, I mean, there were a few people who spoke on their stories. Leah was one of them. And you guys, she is a wonderful, wonderful person. Me and her connected really, really good. I, I remember her. She wears, um, I believe, her natural hair. Um, I remember her. Um, a lovely person. God does everything um, in his timing. And he does it with his own purposes for us individually. He knows the plans according to Jeremiah 29 and 11 that he has for your life, my life, and for all the lives of each and every person in this world. And those are plans of good and not of evil, but to bring us to an expected end. Um, I truly enjoyed reading this story. I'm now trying to see what is going to be the next story um, that I'm going to read. Um, so uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this little section or selection that I'm doing 